45. Salt with you. My name's Nikki. There's been so many changes lately. I've noticed a change in my eyes when I'm trying to read and look at things. I've noticed I'm, I'm doing this a bit more often, looking at screens. Um, I heard a psychologist talking about things the other day and he was talking about four quarters and how when we go through major change and isolation, there's kind of four quarters. I, I love netball, so that was a great analogy for me because that has four quarters. When people start off, they're trying to understand it. Uh, with corona in the first, the first quarter, we panic bought toilet paper. People didn't really know what to do. We get into the second quarter and you've got more of an idea about what's happening. He was really interesting because he's saying we're actually moving into the third quarter now. And in the third quarter, it's the tough time. And it's when people start, they've had enough. They're starting to get a bit cranky of people. And a great bit in the Bible that says, nothing is new under the sun. And it got me thinking about this bit that Jesus was talking about judging other people. Because when we start getting into the third quarter and things have been going on for a while, it's easy to, to look outside. And he said, don't judge or you too will be judged. In the same way you judge others, you'll be judged. With the same measure you used, it will be measured to you. There's this next bit that says, why do you look at the speck of sawdust in your brother's eye and pay no attention to the plank in your own eye? How can you say to your brother, let me take that speck out of your eye when all the time you've got a plank in your own eye? First, take the plank out of your own eye and then you'll be able to see to remove the speck from your brother's eye. Pretty, pretty big words and it makes you realise you, you can't actually change other people. So how do we change ourselves? How do we look inside and think, you know what, I've got some work that I've got to do on the inside. I think one of the things that's been great during Corona is uh, the tech that we've had access to. Uh, I was just saying to a friend earlier that YouTube must be getting a thrashing because everyone's, how do you do this and how do you do that? And I think the tech skills um, ha have gone through the roof and the capacity to use what we've got. I think a lot of our tech has had a lot more function than we've used. But I want to share with you something today. It's, um, it's called the mood meter and it's a way to reflect and keep a record of how you're going internally. So I'm going to share uh, from my phone, the, the bit down the bottom here, the mood meter. There's a few of these that you can see. And what you do when you hop on, it, it asks you how you're feeling. And you write, I feel. Now these quadrants here, these quadrants here are talking about the level of energy. So when you go up, these are low energy to high energy. And this is really low energy when you're feeling flat. When you go across this way, these are really extraordinarily pleasant feelings to average feelings to unpleasant feelings. So what you do is you pick a, qu a quadrant. Do you have a lot of energy? If you do, you're up here. If you're down, you're, you're down here. How are you feeling? Is it an unpleasant feeling or a pleasant feeling? So you pick your little quadrant. So right now, I'm probably feeling energy-wise. I'm somewhere on this side. I'm feeling quite pleasant. And I would say my energy's picked up a little bit. I haven't had a coffee yet. It'll probably go up, but I'm going to pick this one. Now, one of the things we know about your feelings and your emotions is being able to name it helps you to deal with it and plan with it. And when I move around this quadrant, it gives you little words around how you might be feeling. And you can have a look through those and think, well, actually, I don't feel especially hyper or cheerful, so I'm going to come back down a bit. I'm, li I'm not probably feeling lively either yet. If, um, but I am feeling happy, pleased, and I'm quite focused at the moment, so that's a good one. On the other side, I can then come back to this side. If it's probably a more negative one, I can come to the red quadrant. A really fascinating thing is the more you talk about these feelings, you actually start to feel them. So if I was feeling maybe restless, nervous, annoyed, I'm going to come back to this side because I am over here. Um, I'm going to pick this one. This app then, when you press next, it asks you where you are and it asks you for reasons. Oh, I won't put any in right now. But it actually plots it over time and you can start to see patterns, which is really great. But also, if you want to shift your mood, you click on shift and it gives you strategies for how to move your mood. So if you're feeling in the blue quadrant, which is kind of low energy and not very pleasant, so it's a bit sad and depressed and isolated, it can give you strategies on how to shift your mood to a more positive one as well. There's a number of apps like this. This is just one that I find really helpful for plotting time of the day, things that are happening. For me, a pattern that came up was that I probably need to go to bed a bit earlier because in the evening I start to, my energy drops and um, I'm not as happy in the evening and I can get up better in the morning when I've had a good sleep. But um, this could be a really helpful tool. There's lots of technology like this. But if you're someone who's starting to struggle with the third quarter or struggle getting to the end, 
A tool like this could be a really great way to reflect on what's going on, to have a look at that plank in your own eye and see if there's some things that you can put in place.